Sometimes it's good to just yell about football. What are you doing? Don't do this to me, Harry! The Ohio State! It's Ohio State! What do you mean, the? It's a poison! I almost stroked out and died over it. I'm glad to be at the party. I'm mad we're this late. You ain't a captain of nothing but a sinking ship! That helps the defense without them even doing a damn thing! 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 Doing a damn thing! In a calling line. 312-988-15. You tell Johnny all you've heard and seen. Oh, 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 Iris. Oh, 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 Iris. Oh, 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 Iris. Oh, Iris. Iris. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Good morning. I, you know, I was hoping I could come in here with... I was really hoping I could come in here Wednesday and just have a clean, fresh start, given how the end of Monday's program went. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen. That's fine. I'm here to roll with the punches. But I, it was like, does anybody know that meme that Connor, what's going on? Bob Alvey, C. Jones, Taj Murphy, Adam, all you guys, what's going on? Mikey Poles, the whole group. I love you guys. Uh, does anybody know that meme of um, it, it's Chris Farley? I think it's from like Tommy Boy or something where he's all excited and he's looking up with a smile and, and then he sees something he doesn't like and his face gets all sad. That That's me because I came in here on a Wednesday thinking clean slate. Not, you know, I'm not going to let anything from Monday follow me here and I log in and, and it's already happening. And so we'll go over that. We'll try and keep it on the rails and under control. And I'm going to do the best I can. And, and we're going to go over some of this stuff. Uh, there's a couple of calls already. Dr. John, I always like to get it. It's his Wednesday call. I'll get to him early so he could tend to his four girlfriends and do all the things he has to do. Uh, the man is the most interesting man in the world. You could record those commercials for Dr. John and, and it would apply. So thank you everybody for being here. I got a couple interesting things to go over. One of them is the new, the that 14 teamer just got officially officialized. It's a better deal for Notre Dame than anybody even thought. It's it's literally a better deal than than we even thought. Notre Dame did a good job negotiating here. If I'm understanding these numbers and and this stuff, I uh I just think I just think Notre Dame got a good deal as far as threading the needle, being independent, still having access to the playoff. I, this deal it, it kept getting better and better. So I'm kind of impressed with Notre Dame's negotiating or those people playing nice. I think Notre Dame ended up with a good deal. I want to get into that. Um, and tomorrow, I'm going to break some of this out in its own episode with those negotiations and what Notre Dame did and everything. I, it's a big deal. And I think they did a pretty good pretty good job. Um, and so th that's something I want to go over. And then uh, a big piece of this, I got to ask you guys a question about. So let's get into it. Obviously, thank you very much for being here, Tom. What's going on? Good to see you, Tom. Homer TD in the house. Good to see you guys. Obviously, you can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps Johnny out as well. Notifications on that way. You're alerted every time a new episode drops. I know you don't want to miss it. Twitter. Search bar, always Irish rat, always Irish ink. Emails, always Irish at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You could get it if you don't want to see my face. I definitely don't blame you for that. How do you think I feel every day doing this? Uh, call in lines. You know the digits. 312-988-15. Dialed up. Tell your boy all you heard and seen. Instagram, Facebook, always Irish ink. Fighting Irish Wire, read all about it. Patreon.com, a slash always Irish, former captain, leading tackler, by the way, Mike Goolsby and myself breaking it all down. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, Show you, show you the rant. Look at, don't do it now. I don't want you to drop off the stream, but I just posted the video of the rant yesterday. It's my last video I just posted. You can't miss it. 
I cut it out of the stream and put it up. So if you want to see that, feel free. Just don't leave this stream to do it. Check it later. Um, <laughs> here's the deal. Goolsby and I recorded last night for a long time, a couple hours. We had like a full hour long debate about Freeman and the standards and, and where I'm at with it and my frustrations. And it got deep. Um, some personal stuff, some, there's a lot that goes into all this and him and I went at it for like an hour. I broke it into two parts. So we got a couple really juicy episodes coming to you guys of genuine. Here's the key thing. You guys genuine, good intentioned debate and questioning to find the realities in all these Notre Dame issues that we all debate and think about and worry about and where I'm coming from. We had some really good debate, pushing each other back and forth in a respectful way, digging deeper into this stuff. Why do you think what you do? Why do you feel what you do? That's what the Patreon thing's all about. Going four levels deep from the surface and digging that stuff. And it was really healthy, really fun and respectful. Even us pushing back on each other. So the first one will come out after this show ends uh, later on this morning. And then the second part will come out tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I love doing those debates, being, you know, asking me questions and me defending my positions. I love it. So, oh boy, as always, get yourself a Lewski. Get Just get yourself a Lewski. That way you could be able to, uh, that way you could be able to bring it to the tailgate. Get yourself a t-shirt. Get yourself a hoodie. I always told you, I cannot work with anybody I don't trust. I'm not advertising here. I'm not being partners. I'm not doing any of that stuff with anybody I don't trust and verify personally. These guys are on the list. Tom Frawley's definitely on the list. You can trust anybody I work with. It's because I trust. Um, Yeah, Andrew, you're a premium member and you love it. I'm t I, I really like the, the debate stuff. It's juicy. That's what people want. Well-intentioned, Notre Dame thoughts from two ends of the spectrum. Please note, please note that I said genuine. <laughs> That's the issue. I don't mind. I see some of the early chats here and what that devolved into. I don't mind genuine disagreement. Genuine, John, I love Notre Dame too, but I see it differently than you and ears. Part A, B, and C of agree with your viewpoint on Freeman or on the quarterback, whatever it is. I have no problem with that. I've never had a problem with that. I'm never going to have a problem with that. That's what I like is well-intentioned, differing ideas about how to get Notre Dame to the next place we want to get to. But <laughs> it can't. I know you're not genuine when every single day, no matter what goes on, it's the same thing, man. That's the part that gets me. You're you're showing your cards when you're one theme and no matter what, that's it. Then I know you're just here to troll. And usually I can let it roll off my back. I just, it all just, the fuse was lit Monday. I, I, the, it was just, it built and the fuse was lit and then it went off. Uh, I'm sorry to Mark with glasses. I threw your chain. I, I it, Mark, I love you. It's nothing against you, Mark. I, I was just like in that moment of fury and I just needed something to throw and I threw my chain because it was on. I'm sorry. I, I, and Mark, I love you. And I don't mean to disrespect the chain. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, Pat says psycho. You should see me on a golf course. <laughs> Although I got better the last couple of years I was playing a lot of golf. I got better about the anger and the temper. It just gets too darn expensive to have a temper in golf. It's one of the first things I realized is it just gets too expensive to have a temper with golf. And the other thing is my dad always used to say this. He would always say this. 
I'd get mad on the golf course, throw my club, do something stupid. And he would just look at me and go, you're not good enough to have that reaction to a bad shot. It's a really good point. It's a really good point. It, it, my dad will just be like, I don't know why you're getting so mad. You ain't good enough to get that mad. Like you, if you're not shooting right around even par, you there's no reason to get mad in golf. You ain't where you're supposed to be anyway. So relax. <laughs> he always would just be like, dude, uh, are you at the level where you're really going to do that? Like, what's the difference if you shoot an 82 or an 83? <laughs> get over yourself. Oh, that's a good life lesson from dad. Oh, boy. John is nothing but the captain of our sinking ship. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's go down like the Titanic and I'll just stand by in the wheel and let nature take its course or what? <laughs> Get on those lifeboats. I'm going in the captain's quarters or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. God. And... Uh... Jeez. All right, let's do a couple of these super chats and then we'll see what the callers have going on. SPF, stop pump faking. Nick Saban was right. I know you heard about the Iowa player transferring back to Bama. I understand the criticism on coaches, but this is just the beginning with the players. Very odd dynamic. Leaves, says he's going to go back to Iowa, which is his home state. And then that lasted what, like a month or two? And now he's going back. So is there's got to be some, I don't want to say it, but something's got to be in the mix here financially to make these moves that quick. I, I just feel like there's something up there. So it that's the way it goes these days. It's the way it goes. Oh, the commander. Free pass knows Leonard is the starter. John said as much. Free thinks he's pulling the wool over everybody's eyes. Reality is he's gaslighting gaslighting Minchie and Angeli. The reap commander, I know that you know this. All of these coaches, not just ours, all of them have to get up there and say competition, 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 blah, 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 blah. That is a job requirement. That is a part of the job. It is not new here. It is not just here. The theme of every spring is competition you have to do that. You cannot get up there, even if you're 100% sure you know who the starter is, you cannot get up there and say that. You're going to kill the spirit of competition. Those guys, like, it, you can't do that. It's just not realistic. Oh, is he lying? No, it's called being a coach. This is just the game you have to play, and it's the business, and everybody knows it. I do not judge anybody for this no coaches for like this is how it is i'm astounded still by the amount of notre dame fans that seem to believe everything that comes out of coach's mouth at the at the podium it's it's unbelievable to me the amount of notre dame fans that take every word at that podium for gospel like it's i just Understand that. Like, is it because it's Notre Dame and we think we got to tell the truth and the whole truth because it's Notre Dame? Like, no, there are certain narratives and frameworks that these guys got to work in. It's part of the job. But I always am shocked at people hanging on every word of all these press conferences with Freeman or with in the old days with Kelly. I, I mean, that was just like, I couldn't watch. I just couldn't watch. <laughs> But I just, it's, and here's a quarterback question for you. And actually, I'm going to hold it. I have a major quarterback question. Maybe after I get to the calls, there's a few of them now. I'll get to my quarterback question. There's something really interesting here that I can't figure the answer out for. I'll ask the group. Um, so stay tuned for that. Mikey. I'm genuinely curious on why Luke and Cry even watch ND. Like you ate the coach, you ate every decision they make. You're negative on every player they get. Why waste your time? I think these guys love Notre Dame. I think they love Notre Dame. They're here every day. That's too much effort for a troll who really likes another team. I think these guys love Notre Dame and they're scared to get hurt. Genuinely, that's what I think. I think they love Notre Dame. And it's just easier to be negative, glass half empty, than to get your hopes up and get let down. I genuinely think that is the root 
of a lot of this. Um, people that are just jaded. and But I think deep down in their hearts, you guys, I think it, the guys that troll me all the time about it, I think they love Notre Dame just as much as you and I. Th this is an outlet. I've been thinking about this since my blow up. I think trolling all negative all the time and trying to get me worked up, it's like a therapy for those guys to be able to process their Notre Dame frustration and angst and disappointment over the years. I think that's a way to get that out, to be able to, to do that and feel a little better about it, like just shooting that out in the ether. My therapy for Notre Dame frustration is doing this show, talking to the people. It's getting frustrated and going in here and recording a video yelling about what happened with Notre Dame. That's my therapy to deal with it. I think those guys really love Notre Dame, diehard Notre Dame people deep down. And I just think that it makes them feel a little better to go on the negative. I, that That's my conclusion. I do not think those guys hate Notre Dame. That is psychotic behavior. If these are like undercover LSU people that create a fake Notre Dame account to troll me every single time I go live, too much effort. These people love Notre Dame. They're just hurt. That's my conclusion. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Oh, man. Mikey, don't bother, Mikey. Don't stress yourself out over it. C. Jones. Well, I guess there's six million more reasons that Notre Dame should make the playoff next season. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. That's six million, man. I didn't see though. I didn't see that six million in any of the early details. I looked multiple sources to make sure I got this right. And we were in the 1.8 million payout per team that the group of five got. We were in that in the beginning when I saw this. Then we got up to the next level, the ACC Big 12, you know, level or whatever, right with them, 12, 13 or whatever. And then I'm going, okay, you're 9 million less than the Big 10 and the SEC payouts. You know, is that workable to you as a Notre Dame fan without falling uh, further behind? And then they finalize it yesterday and it comes out with a $6 million kicker for Notre Dame added on. If you make the playoff, so you get the, the 12 and then if you make it, you get the six. Well, I ain't any good at math. The only class I ever got to be in is the college math class me and Pat were in and I'm never going to get over it. It's the only class I ever got to be in. I think it's because Pat was there. He was distracting me. And 12 plus six is 18. The SEC and the Big Ten are getting 21. Bro, I can live with that. Three million. There's some Notre Dame fans that dropped that out of their pocket on accident when they parked for the game. Three million. I can live with that difference. So Notre Dame got a pretty good deal in this, I think, overall. And the, and the buy thing, we're over it. We're over it. We accept it. We're over it. Everybody else making a big deal about that Notre Dame buy situation, except for Notre Dame. We're over it. We accepted it a year ago. Whatever. C. Jones. If one of our wide receivers can become a legitimate deep ball threat, it'll open up so many options. It'll open up everything. Can the FIU kid get behind people or at least make them worry about that? Everything loosens up. You're able to have that. Not only does it help the passing game, it helps the run game. All of these things, the better you're at in one, it sets up the other for success. Think about some of Notre Dame's running game that has excited us, that we've liked in the recent past. Imagine how much better that, that run scheme would be if you also had a passing game that a defense had to worry about. What? You got to understand that any success Notre Dame's had running the ball that you like, they're doing it against usually bad numbers because nobody's been scared of Notre Dame throwing the ball. Clemson is the one that's in my mind the most. They absolutely sold out crashing the line of scrimmage every single play because they knew Notre Dame couldn't do anything else. And they were right. And I'm still not over it. Still not over it. Just for men, I dude, complete a pass. I'm sorry. Like, come on. Come on, man. I keep forgetting how to complete a pass. I keep forgetting and they're kicking my ass. Complete a pass against Clemson, Sam.
They had zero fear in Notre Dame's passing game, crashed the line repeatedly, and we ran right into it. Imagine if you if you didn't have that, and they actually had to guard the whole field. What could happen? <sighs> Man. Mikey, we're going to the phone as soon as I get caught up with the chats. Mikey, anyways, back to football. The top three positions I'm looking most forward to seeing are QBs, linebackers, wide receiver. Those are excellent selections. I would add in O-line, D-line. I just want to see how that O-line's coming along, how we're gelling and all that stuff. In the D-line, you feel really good on the inside. I, I want to know who we got on these edges, who could get after people. Who that's the next level for that group? Who could get after people crank up that heat, baby? Um, and then the quarterbacks will get to it. I got an interesting question on that. Linebackers, too. And how realistic is it? Let me put it this way: how much do you think KVA can and will play year one? True freshman, got the body, got the instincts. I am not sure what the reality of that is. You get a kid like that, he early enrolls, he's physically built enough, you think he could contribute. I don't know what is realistic to expect of him early. I, I genuinely don't don't know that. Um, I don't. Mark, I trust we are the better team week one, but with recent history of bad true road openers, stadium will be rocking, Elko's there. This is something else I've been taking heat on. And I cannot explain it any more clear than this. I do not think AM is has an elite roster like that I'm terrified of. That is not my concern with this game. It's the things Mark said. Notre Dame has not performed great on the biggest stage in a huge game moment, whatever, all that kind of stuff. Everybody looking at you, the you know, big needle mover, all of this stuff. Like we have a history of being bad the totality of all of that makes this a big moment it is not that i'm afraid of texas a&m's roster man to man although they do have some sec athletes you guys can't forget that they have some fast twitchy sec athletes down there um but it's the totality of the enormous moment that this is year three the first one of free uh, the first one of the new playoff you know, first game of the year, all of this, our history of not winning in these moments, all of it in totality. It's a big, uh, it's a big moment. Commander, somebody has to get it going, Jason. It definitely isn't the highly judgmental, boring Patrick Cotter. Why do you think he's got a wrench by his name? Because he's highly judgmental and I trust his judgment. <laughs> That's perfect, Commander. Now you're starting to understand it. He is highly judgmental. And that's the kind of guy I need to guard my chat. <laughs> Good call. That's the idea, is that I trust the guy's judgment. Good call. You're getting it. Oh, man. Philip, it's simple, you guys. Look at Philip. What a nice uh, photo there, man. Really official like headshot there. Looking good, Philip. If you guys don't like Freeman and the Irish, get the hell out of here and go take it elsewhere. If you love and support the Irish, we're all good. I'm telling you, even the people saying that they're down on the team and down on Freeman love Notre Dame. They do. They just can't. This is how they express it, I think, because they're just so distraught that we haven't been elite for so long. It, it, and you got to take it out on somewhere. Why not come on Johnny's show? Nick Saban needs to shut the hell up. Bam is paying guys to re-enter the portal. Again, I told you guys this before. Oh, thanks for the super chats. We'll read those and go to go to the phones. Um, the say here's the thing, man. Some people are so naive. Again, I get back to believing what coaches say. You need to take every highfalutin, high moral position that Saban's talking about now. These high-level, moralistic, philosophical 
issues he has with, with the game and how it's trending and everything. You need to take what he says with a grain of salt. Once you're out of this and nothing you say or that happens affects you, it's pretty freeing to let it rip and to take high moral ground positions philosophically on college football issues once they no longer affect you. Are you following me? It's really easy to get up there and be against this and that for the morals of the game and everything right when you're done. And it doesn't matter what happens. You don't get as much credit for taking these stances now as you do while you're coaching. For instance, Dabo's been against all this stuff. Uh, he, he has. NIL and the transfer portal. He is against both of them. He's kind of said that. It's a bad move to say that while you're trying to accumulate talent and you're saying, I disagree, they should be able to move where they want and make money. That's a tough recruiting pitch. But I respect him doing that, even though it's bad for the, for the team, it makes recruiting harder. I respect Dabo saying that while he's in this way more than Saban doing it from this uh, Emerald Palace after it's all over and he doesn't have a dog in the fight anymore. Of course, he's going to take the moral eye road to look as good as possible to everybody now because nothing matters to him now. The concept that anyone in America wants me to believe no, uh, Alabama has not been paying guys for a very, very long time going all the way back to the 70s that I could verify from a guy I personally know from that area connected, asked to be a bag man way back in the 70s to act like. Alabama's not in that game and hasn't been in that game for decades is laughable. And they had a dry spell where they weren't, there's some things fell through. They have their ups and downs and dry spells or whatever, but to act like that's not been a common practice for Alabama football since the seventies, when they need it and when they want it, laughable, laughable. Anybody that thinks all that talent on all those rosters they got was just straight up recruiting your out of your mind. You don't live in reality. $5 holler. Just for your epic rant on Monday, crying belly got to go. Eric, thanks for the $5. It felt, I felt great afterwards getting that out. $10 holler from my main man, Martinez. Here's for the great rant on Monday, Johnny. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. $5 holler from Philip. Keep us going, John. Go Irish from New Mexico. There you go. Oh boy, look at this. Commander Luke, $20 holler. You are correct, John, and thank you. I appreciate this. I appreciate this. I was really thinking about it after Monday, and a few different people reached out to make sure I didn't, like, stroke out. Um, yeah, I... <clears throat> and that's what I think it is. So I, I understand it. Everybody's got to deal with this stuff the way you could deal with it. I understand that, uh, but that doesn't mean that sometimes I'm just not in the mood for it or it just crosses whatever that line is in my brain. And then I, you know how I do it, zero to a hundred real quick. $20 holler from Eric. That is my lawyer in, uh, <clears throat> that is my lawyer in Michigan. There are better ways to go about it though. There are, there are. And again, the other thing, you guys, okay, we're going to go to the phones. The other thing is, I really make an effort not to ban people from the chat unless it's like really bad. Like I'm willing to deal with a lot of trolling and all that stuff because I do think it's fun. And I do think that it's good for the show. Too many of these shows, if you disagree with them at all, you're banned. And it's just, and then it's an echo chamber of everybody on the same thing. That's lame. That's not the point of this, bro. So I, uh, I you know, I, I really do try and not ban people unless it's really inappropriate. That doesn't mean I'm not going to yell at you. That doesn't mean I'm not going to blow up. Uh, but I really try and let it go because I, I like mixing it up. It's not something I shy away from can't 
Bro, you got to love John. John whoops the camera's ass. It's the offseason. This fool went full throttle. Got to love the show and the man. I can't thank you. I'm just glad you're back, buddy. I'm just glad. Yeah, because there are Iowa State, Michigan State, Michigan State people on here. Very annoying. I, but again, I expect a Michigan troll or like an Ohio State or LSU person or USC person to be in here. I expect them to take anti-Notre Dame stances. It's when Notre Dame fans, Notre Dame and me, that people get mixed up on. Oh, man. So I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's wild. You never know what you're going to get here. I will say this. You name me any Notre Dame show that's less predictable than this one. Dr. John, what's going on, buddy? Good morning. Uh, Johnny, be glad you gave me quite a start on Monday. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> quite a fright. Hey, I like that accent. Where'd you grow that from? I like that. <laughs> it's a new one. I like it. Yeah, well, I was going to try to do it the whole call, but it ain't going to work. But uh, you don't know the half of what I went through on, on Monday. I had I had stepped away. I had you on the big screen. I had you on the big screen. I had just finished my last cup of coffee, and you just started that call, and I got up to... Uh, tidy up a bit and all of a sudden I the volume goes up I turned around I looked at the telly it was purple and red and by the time I got over there you yanked the uh, headphones off and the uh, screen was frozen and I hadn't heard what was going on so I thought one of maybe maybe one of those Luke characters uh, found your studio and got in there and did you in <laughs> You know it was, what? It was nice to see you post something yesterday. I guarantee you, if I met Commander Luke and Crying Belly in real life, we'd probably have fun. We would probably drink a couple beers and it would probably be fun. Like, I feel like I have a de an understanding somehow with where they're coming from. Um, and so, I don't know, man. It was just one of those moments. I just wanted to get warmed up for the week, Dr. John. I just had to get the blood flowing for the week. It was good for me. Well, you did. And, uh, oh, by the way, happy spring. Yeah, happy first day of spring today. Yeah, I know. I wish it felt more like got, it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I guess it's first day of spring. Yeah, we're going to have 62 degrees here today. The golf course is supposed to open up on Saturday. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, but we're back in the deep freeze Saturday, too, so that didn't last long. It yeah. didn't last long. Yep. Um, yeah. so Dr. John, what's on your mind with the football? Can we, I want to steer it back to the football, not make it all about the troll situation. Um, I don't know, man, we're, we're in an, what, we're in an in-between yeah. Dr. John, we're in an in-between this fan base, I think is all over the place. There's a lot of people bought into this trending in the right direction, full throated confidence and hope. Other people are like one foot in one foot out. Some people are just like, out until they're proven to be to that they could come in. I just think there's a lot of like, this is a big year for stability and, and confidence. And that's what I'm feeling from the fan base. I don't know if you agree or disagree. Well, I agree. I, I feel very positive. I know on your, uh, uh, website, the, the main page, you've got fan anxiety down there. I won't get that till we kick off against uh, A&M. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I've got a little, uh, a little mind exercise for you about quarterbacks. Oh boy. How would you, are you going to feel more positive or more negative if somebody beats Leonard out for the number one job? If that happened, which I think will be, an outlier. Like I would not put my money on that being the outcome at all. Um, if it happened, no. if it happened, you would have to trust the evaluation. If that happened, I, here's an answer. 
If that happened and it was for legitimate competitive reasons that a guy other than Leonard won that job, you would have to say that's a positive because whoever it is that would win the job, you would have more than one year. So, like, I don't think this is going to happen, what you're saying. But if it did, it would be a, a, a net positive for Notre Dame because whoever it is, you would have for more than one year. And if they're good enough to start, it's not one and done. And you could build some rhythm and consistency going into the next year. So that's how I, I look even, at it. I wouldn't even. Well, I, I would agree with you on that. He's going to be around for a while. But I would be totally excited, especially if we. Uh, have a legitimate uh, understanding of Leonard's skills. Yeah, if he's that good and gets beat out. I would be, I would be totally excited. Yeah, I think that's the message you would have to take from it. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I just think the odds of what you're saying happening are like one percent. I don't care anything said at any podium. I don't care what any news outlet says. I think with health. 99% Riley Leonard. And if if it happens, it's going to be a good sign. It's going to be a good sign, but I put oh I I would put my money I'd say 99 to 1 it doesn't happen. If healthy, it's going to be Riley Leonard this year. But uh, I if he gets beat, you're ahead of schedule with those other quarterbacks for sure. I would probably wet my depend. I would <laughs> That's how excited I'd be. That's a mental image I didn't need on a. I, I didn't need that mental image on a Wednesday morning, Doctor John. I just got over the thought of you in that hot tub with a handful of Cialis, and now we're on the other end of the spectrum. All right, let's let's move on. Let's move on. What's what's the story with this pot of gold, and why is everybody excited about it? So what that is is the next. Um, the 26th class, the next batch of high school recruits on St. Patrick's Day, Notre Dame sent out like over 100 offers. So it's the initial scholarship offers. Notre Dame's offering the next class. And they put it all together in a big theme. And then on St. Patrick's Day, send out all those offers and all that. So it's just kind of a big deal because it's kind of like the first big push into the next recruiting class. Um, and so it's a big deal. And then when they do that, if you're on Twitter, all those players post, I got my offer from Notre Dame, happy St. Patrick's Day, blah, blah, blah. And it's just a big rush because it's like a hundred offers all at once. So that's kind of the deal. Yeah. But how many commitments? Well, what did they get? They got another phase on, didn't they? Now we're phase on times two. What? What? Yeah. We're phase on times two, but it isn't. But Dr. John, it's not supposed to be about that. This is an introductory kind of a get like this is the beginning. It, I don't think it was expected that it would lead to a handful of commitments. This is like the initial the initial batch of guys they want to get serious with. So I wasn't expecting commitments out of it. But now we're phase on times two. Yeah, but I, I didn't understand why people were so excited about it. I just think it was uh, Saint. I think, it I, th I think get he, some commitments or something. I just think it was St. Patrick's Day, and it was all over social media, and people were talking about it because all the recruits were saying, "You know, I got my Notre Dame offer." I think that was a largely social media driven thing. All right. Also, where what's the uh, what's the bottom line on this uh, college football playoff deal? I have not read anything and I want to. Where do I go? All right. So the the I would Google it. And if you Google it, you and do news on your tab, Google and then click the news filter and then type that in. I like doing that because it gives you five or six different news outlets that all have a story on it. And then I click on a couple of them to make sure they're all lined up accurate together. So I think it was yesterday. There was a tweet that came out. ESPN and the CFP concluded and finalized the finances for the 14 teamers starting in 26. I was really. Ah, that's where the 14 came in. Yeah. And Dr. John, I'm very, right. I was surprised because those details 
had an extra six million in the kitty for Notre Dame that was not in any of the other stuff. Follow me here. The Big Ten and the SEC going to get twenty one million a year, no matter whether they're in the playoff or not. Each team gets twenty one million. Notre Dame gets their twelve that we already knew of. Then yesterday it comes out if they make the playoff, they get six million. So that would be eighteen million compared to the twenty one for the Big Two. You close the financial gap. You could exist that way. So that six million was is a new thing, and it's a big deal. Now you got to make it to get it. But if you do, Notre Dame's only at a three million payout deficit with the Big Two, and that is totally livable, totally doable. Well, yeah, that's as far as the the playoff money goes, though. Yeah, but what what about the rest of the money? I mean, the Big Ten's got a hell of a TV contract. How close are we to that with NBC? Well, what do people think? 67 million, 50 NBC, and then you add on that ACC piece and you're at least in the ballpark. Um, you're in the ballpark. So I actually think, Dr. John, I, I really think that, I think Notre Dame got a pretty good deal lining themselves up for the new playoff. Everyone else seems to be making a bigger deal of us losing that buy than we are. We, I accepted that as a tax a year ago, and I'm ready to roll. Yeah, that has never bothered me because uh, uh, you've got the conference playoffs in there, so that's a game that we don't have to play. Right. Yeah, and you look. You, lo- you look at about that you look at that playoff. as your buy. Yeah, go ahead. You look at that as your buy, and then you're weak to rest yeah. to get ready for the playoff. And the and you don't have the risk. You don't have the risk of losing that game and dropping down your seeds, or losing the game and falling out of the playoff. Like, I think Notre Dame people are fine with it. it you, any mature person, needed to understand in these negotiations, Notre Dame was going to have to concede things. Like, we were not going to bully our way through your big, bad Notre Dame. You were up against everything. The too many people on the other side of the table. We were always going to have to concede something. I don't have that big of a problem with it. Um, Adam Dowling saying he thinks it's more closer around 60 from NBC. And then whatever you're getting from the ACC. So uh, 75, 77, 76, somewhere in there per year. It's a little bit of dough. When uh, when they go to the fourteen, uh, what do they what do they do with those two extra teams? How do they, they only get two buys, or what do they do? You know what's interesting about this? They finalized the money. I don't think I've seen a finalized format. That's what's interesting to me, Dr. John. They figured out, they reverse engineered this thing where they figured out the money first, and I don't think they've actually come out with the exact format. So I don't know. Well, I would think that's the way it would break down. You get two buys, you get uh, 12 teams playing in that first round. Now you got six teams to go with the two, and you got eight. So I would imagine that's what it is. Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> but but maybe not. Yeah, and the other thing that I'm waiting for is um, guaranteed promise bids, like the automatic bids. I'm still a little unclear on exactly how all that's going to go. Um, so I I don't know. We'll we'll see. But I think Notre Dame position themselves about as well as as possible. I'm happy with it. All right. Well, I'm going to Google that and and get up to. Speed on it. Uh, last thing, I got a comment on your dad's uh, uh, comment about you not being good enough. Uh, I've got a similar tale, not about me, but about one of my grade school buddies. He was a high school girls uh, golf coach, and he actually ended up, the last thing he did in his career was win the state championship. But anyway, he retires, and he goes down to Arizona. And he's like a three or a four at the time, but he's not playing well, and he's playing with some old codger stranger to him. And about the last time he threw a club, the guy pulled him aside and said, Padna, you're too far along down the trail not to enjoy the hike. 
Yeah, that's a good so one. Keep that in mind as you age, sir. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. That's a good life hey, you got parable. A, you got a show Friday night? I think so. We are leaving for Florida Saturday. Right. And so we'll be in Florida from Saturday to Saturday. So my schedule is going to be messed up. I would like to go live Friday. Maybe Pat could join and we could get one, one in before we head down south. Yeah. Do you, you play down there or not? Uh, I do not a lot, but like right on the course where my parents' place is, you just go around the block and check in and play. So yeah, we, we do play a little bit. Where is that? Uh, Hobe Sound. So a little bit north of Palm Beach. Oh, you're over there. Okay. Yeah. We're, you. yeah. On the, on the Atlantic side. And then it's like, I would say a half hour straight north of Palm Beach, right on the water. It's nice. Well, well, all right, lad. I'm going to turn you loose now. All you right. Go ahead and have yourself a great show, would you now? Oh, I like that accent. You need to keep that for permanent, man. I like that. Thanks, Dr. John. Have a good one, buddy. You too, bud. See Bye -bye. ya. I like that accent on Dr. John. I really do. Here's the other issue that's come up. I don't want to forget this. It's a key point. I'm glad you brought it up, Lee. Good to have you, Lee. I don't think I've seen your name for a while. Good to have you. The ACC contract is ironclad. No one's going any, anywhere till it's up. So is for not. Good use of the word not, by the way. You better not to mention that again. Um, here's the deal. Notre Dame did all this negotiative work to end up in a decent place for this expanded playoff and control what they could control in the dynamic, negotiate for themselves what they could negotiate for themselves. Beautiful. What happens if the ACC comes crumbling down now? Could that be, could that be a breaking point for Notre Dame? Like what, what happens if Clemson pays a bunch of money to leave or whatever and, and, and they leave, and then where does Notre Dame go? What happens with that? Pat, what happens if the ACC crumbles? Where does that put Notre Dame? I don't think, so I don't think, I, I don't want to get into too much because I think this is a good topic for Friday night. And I have a 12 pack of Guinness sitting in my basement fridge uh -oh. that I bought in December uh -oh. before I knew my wife was going to tell me I can't drink in January. Oh boy. And I just, I've been gone all February and pretty much all of March uh -oh. that I haven't even opened up yet. Uh -oh. So I'm home alone on Friday night. Oh boy. I'm getting into this 12 pack on Friday night. Ooh, woo, baby. Ooh. So I like it. With that said, yeah, with that said, I, the contract for the ACC, even though Florida state is suing, I, it, I don't, it's going to cost Florida state a ton of money to get out of it. It's going to cost anybody a ton of money to get out of it. I don't see it happening. That contract is tough. It is a tough contract. The, easy, the, the team that has it easiest to get out of that contract is Notre Dame. But there's no reason for Notre Dame to get out of it because of what it offers them. And also with this new playoff deal, why if you're Florida State? Now, I get it. The money, the, they're losing money. They're, they are going to lose money. But it's going to cost them more money to get out of it. So... Have, but you have, if you're Florida State or Clemson and you think you're going to put championship teams together, you have the easiest, the ACC is the easiest, the weakest conference. You have the easiest path to the playoff outside of if you've got to play Notre Dame every three years. So is it just a financial so, thing then, right, Pat? It isn't a competitive it's, thing. Oh, it's just all the money. money. Well, no, Florida State is pissed. Florida State is pissed because if they, if Florida State thinks that they're in the, the, the Big Ten or the SEC, and they have the season they have, regardless of their quarterback situation, they don't miss the playoff. That's what Florida State is pissed about. <clears throat> what can so you? That's, that's what it all. Can you about. answer this for me, Pat? I was reading on Twitter. There was like some people covering the lawsuits. What is the crux of the argument in the lawsuits for these teams trying to get out of the ACC? What is like the foundation of their legal argument? that they should be able to get out of that deal. Do you like, I don't have a clear understanding on what, what they are saying is wrong with the deal that they should be able to get out of it. 
hold on. I'm reading Gilmore's comment. Yeah, I see that too. Then fill us in. Fill us in. Because my, it's there. What, what trouble are they in? They're being sued. It's, they did not do, they did not hold a gun to FSU's head to sign this deal. Nobody was coerced into this deal. They, these, these schools agreed to this contract. Florida state is not suing the ACC because of some failure to live up some end of an agreement. They're suing them so they don't have to pay them the $65 million to get out. That's what it's about. It's about $65 million. So, and, and, and honestly, they could easily do it and, and, and pay it and make that money up in the SEC, but they don't want to pay it because they're a public institution and they have the answer for that. So he's saying... Right. He's, they, they, you sign, you, what do you mean exit clauses are not legal? This is, this is, it, they signed the contract. They signed the contract. This is this is not the first time it's been challenged. They signed a contract. They, it, it, it's it's just it's ridiculous to think that an institution can sign a contract and then because they're not happy with the contract they signed, they can back out of it. Andrew, you do sales. You have exit clauses for your customers in your sales contracts when they try to leave their contract early. There's a buyout clause. Absolutely, they're legal. I just held a company to a buyout clause last week. That they had a slight a three year deal and they wanted out after one year because they weren't they weren't fulfilling their promises. This is this this is an exit clause. This is not there's not there, there's no standing in this lawsuit from from what I've read from legal minds. The only thing they have going for them is that it was filed in Tallahassee. Interesting. So, yeah, I, I anyways. Yeah, I don't. I just, I, man, and you know what it makes me think about Pat is how fast life changes on you. When those guys all signed that long-term TV deal, they thought they could relax. We're locked in. We're covered long-term. This right. is a good they deal. A, we could relax. They signed a bad deal. Yeah. And then the whole world changed. Everything inflated. And then now you you went from feeling comfortable that you're protected for about like decades to now you have a major, major problem. But Pat, what would happen if one or two of these teams left? Where, where does it leave Notre Dame with all those other sports and the five team deal we have? Where what do you do? I don't I don't I don't, I don't know what would happen if if it happened because I, I, I don't know what I'm sure I, I would hope that Notre Dame has some sort of clause in there that if you know if it shrinks below a certain number of teams they can pull out or certain teams that they can pull out. I would hope that Jack Swalbrick was smart enough to negotiate that in there, but I don't I don't have the contract in hand Pat, that Notre Dame signed. Notre Dame doesn't have to release it. Could they just pay it and end up in a whole short term, but then make no, make the bigger money long term that it's a long term play and you got to eat a ton of money now, but you know, in the long term, I re- you're going to be good with that, that TV deal. I don't know, man. I, it's yeah. just, that's so a lot of thing, instability. Notre Dame, a private, Notre Dame, a private school could pay it because they don't have to answer to the public. They don't have to answer to the state representatives. Florida State can't because they have to cleanse the same deal. Duke could do it if Duke wanted to do it, but it doesn't benefit Duke to leave in any way whatsoever. Right. Um, and so, and so it's very, it's just, it's just conflated. And the, the, my point here is this, and we can talk about this more on Friday night. The money is getting so out of control, and I'm not just talking. I'm not talking about NIL, but I'm talking about these TV contracts. If you look at the deal that. NBC signed with with uh, the Big Ten. They are essentially giving ninety million dollars to Rutgers and ninety million dollars to Maryland, and they will see no revenue from that game. They yep. will lose money on that game when those teams play each other. They are putting all of their hopes in Michigan versus Ohio State, or Ohio State now versus USC, or Michigan versus USC. That's what it's all dependent on. That's where they have to make all of their revenue. The 90% of the schools in the Big Ten, they are losing money. <clears throat> the Big Ten is a very top-heavy conference. It's, it's, it's two or three teams. That's it. There is no value as you go down it. Nobody gives a shit about Illinois versus Indiana. Even the people who are Illinois fans don't give a shit about that game because it doesn't mean anything, and it won't mean anything. You know, At least in the SEC – you have multiple teams who have a chance. You have a Georgia, you have an Alabama, you have an LSU, you have, you know, now you have Texas and Oklahoma. There's a lot of marquee brands in that conference. 
You don't have that in the Big Ten. But even so, as NBC starts to, this is going to turn into the Olympics. I, I don't know if people know this, but when NBC bought the Olympics, I bought it for a long, long time. They lost their ass. They lost their ass on it. It was one of the worst things that they've ever done, and they couldn't believe it, and they tried to renegotiate, renegotiate, renegotiate. That's what's going to happen here. That's that's what's going to happen here. These teams cannot, the, the NBC, these, these, these television contracts cannot continue to pay these teams to lose money. That's what they're doing. And, and eventually <clears throat> someone's going to say, why are we paying all this money for Maryland? And records. Well, Pat, Why don't are they paying all this money. Haven't for teams but that wait, don't care about. Haven't they done the math to realize they're going to end up ahead? Or why would they set it up this way? Haven't they done the math and they just they, figure out that it's that whatever they they end up on the high end is going to cross out whatever Rutgers loses them and they end up in the plus? Sure. Is that not the theory? Sure. No, I'm sure, sure. But what does end up ahead mean? Are they ending up ahead two million dollars or a hundred million dollars? Are they ending up ahead fifty million dollars or? Uh, Five hundred million dollars. What is what does that actually mean? Right. What do their numbers mean? I get that the the margins are and and then also John, there's there's the forecasting and then there's the reality. There's forecasting and then there's reality. What does it actually bring in? And if you're forecasting for X amount of dollars and then Michigan and Ohio State both have a bad season, boom, <laughs> you just have a giant loser on your hands because nobody cares to watch that game or when you got, and especially if you got Michigan, Ohio State, they're having a bad season, and you're going up against, you know, uh, another, you know, you're going up against a huge SEC game that's going to take all the viewers away. Your your advertisers aren't going to want to pay for that. They're going to start to pull out. They're going to start to say, "Wait a second, why am I paying all this money for for you know for nothing for no eyeballs?" It's there's it, it, this always happens with every business. There's always the forecasting, and there's the reality. Costs always go up. And and then you never you never meet your margins, and I'm not going to be here and say that NBC is a well-run organization because of the, the other things they've done. They've lost NBC has lost money on golf. NBC has lost money on the Olympics. NBC has lost the only thing that NBC makes money on is Notre Dame, and that's because they don't really put any money into Notre Dame. <laughs> right. So, uh, so it's 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 crazy. They blow my mind. And at some point, somebody's going to say, "Why don't we just go to Michigan?" Why don't we just go to Ohio State? Why don't we just go to USC? Why don't we just go to Alabama and LSU and Texas and say, how about you guys leave your conferences? We'll pay you all the money. And those teams can go fend for themselves. And then what happens? All of a sudden, the conferences break down and independence football becomes the way of college football again. Yeah. And what does Notre Dame do? Notre Dame just sits, sits, yeah. back, sits, back, sits back and wait. Imagine that. It's that, if you've seen, you're off Twitter now, that meme of like the priest relaxing in the lawn chair with shades and that smoke, like the world's not affecting him. That's us. That's Notre Dame letting all those people figure it out. And we're just sitting there with our legs crossed, smoking a, a, a skinny cigarette, you know, waiting for everybody else to yeah. Join, um, Pat. Can I right. one one more? Let me think about John. Minnesota versus Iowa is a bad investment. You're paying ninety million dollars for that. It's a bad investment. It's not worth that much money. Well, they must figure otherwise, right, Pat? Like they wouldn't do all this unless they no. figured they were going to end up ahead. Why would they do this if they didn't do the math and yeah, end up I ahead? I, no, because because they're banking on they're banking on the conference championship game. They're banking on the two or three games a season that are going to draw six or seven million eyes. That's what they're banking on. Because you think about it, a lot of these games are not even on national TV. They're on local broadcasting. There's no way. There's no way they're making up any they're making up any money when they got these games on local broadcasting or the Big Ten network where you got to subscribe to it and half the people that live half the people that watch it don't even subscribe to it. There's just there's no money being made. Oh, this is interesting. All right, let me say. Wait, wait a second. This caller is not. Hold on. Uh, mellow number seven, six or six or seven million. That's that's a high number of watching football. That's a high number. Six or seven million people. It's six or seven million televisions tuned in. That's a very high number for college football. Believe it or not, there are 360 million people in this country, and the vast majority of them do not watch college football. Yeah. Um, 
All right. Can I change this on you a little bit? I, I'd save some of that for yeah. Friday, but I want to ask yeah. you, let similar vein, but a different topic. I want to know, I kind of think Notre Dame did a pretty good job in these ultimate CFP negotiations. I'm pretty happy with how it ended up. We, we could be independent, have a shot in the playoffs, and the money gap closed a little bit. I think they did a good job. What say you? Uh, I think that I think they did a great job. I think you know you know what here. I think they did such a good job. Nobody's talking about it. That's that's right. Because because when all the stuff came out about the playoff thing and it made Notre Dame look bad to to, to not get a buy game stuff stuff we've known for over a year. Yeah. Every 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 wannabe podcaster in their basement who does a YouTube show and rants like an idiot was talking about it. <laughs> yeah, they all were. They all were. That's for sure. <laughs> they were all talking, and it made and it made it made major. It made major. You know, ESPN. It was people who have no idea about college football, like Stephen A. Smith. They're talking about Notre Dame and and the fact that the college football playoff is telling them that they need to join a conference. When everybody knew that's not what it was. Notre Dame's bye week was the bowl championship week. That's the the, the I mean, I'm sorry, the, the conference championship week. That's Notre Dame's bye week. And it's written into it. They'll always have that bye week, and then they play a game. And so everyone, everyone who understood, understood. Dude, who but in the now, now who have this, who in the world? I have got to delete this person for the name. Jesus, God, oh my God! All right, yeah. never it. Never mind, it's gone. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. creative, very, very creative, but we're not doing that here. So you got to go, whoever that was. That name's inappropriate. All right, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, but, but now, like, this comes out, Notre Dame's getting a bag of cash, and and I don't, wait, I don't see anybody talking about it. It's not, you know, I might not be on, on Twitter, but I'm on, I'm on, you know, other, other, form, not social media, but I get, I get news feeds and I get alerts about Notre Dame football. I'm not hearing anything about this. Yeah. I'm not, you know, outside of just the one article that talked about chaos as a whole and mentioned Notre Dame in it. I'm not hearing anyone trying to, you know, say, wow, Notre Dame did this. No, no, because you know what this does? This extends the life of independence. Yep. This extends this, between this. They're the NBC deal, which if it is near sixty, you're getting you're getting so you're getting what fifteen to twenty million from the ACC. So now you're at eighty, and now you're getting this. You're right at you're you're right there. You know you're not that far off from these guys. You're not that far off from these guys. Notre Dame is getting the money, and and that's that's what we you know that's that's what we're looking for. So it's I just I don't see a reason for ND to change their path and this negotiation. You know, and the biggest thing this tells me. Is when, when you have um, all these people talking about Notre Dame being irrelevant. The biggest thing this tells me is that Notre Dame draws eyes. Notre yep. Dame draws money, and the college, the rest of the college football world knows this. The, the jerk offs in, in Bristol, Connecticut, they might want to write their fake stories about about Notre Dame being irrelevant. But the truth of the matter is, the world of college football knows the value of Notre Dame yep. to the sport. And they're going to bend over backwards to keep Notre Dame involved. Yep. And you I'm know, not saying at some point they're going to recognize they could they could lean on Notre Dame to join a conference. That may still happen. Yep. But they still but they see the value of Notre Dame. And history. Pat, I think that's one of the big issues other fan bases have with this when they're like, "Why don't these people bully Notre Dame? Why do they always play nice with Notre Dame to keep them involved? And why don't they play hardball? Because Notre Dame's a good working partner, and all these people know it." And so they're going to push Notre Dame a little bit, but they're they're ultimately going to work with them because they're just good for everyone's business. And a lot of these fans of other teams don't want to acknowledge that. It's just good for business. Um, and so I, I'm happy with how it turned out. It gives Notre Dame the ability to go into the new playoff era as an independent, see how it goes. And then if a bunch of things change, they get that look-in clause where they can reevaluate with no financial penalty, reevaluate their standing in that contract. I think Notre Dame did a pretty good job here. I do. Yeah, I okay. I can hear you typing. Are you typing something? There you go. <laughs> anything uh, Anything else, Pat? Save, save some in the tank for Friday night. 
Yeah, I'll save it. I'll save it for Friday night. Oh man! All Are right. You do a Friday morning show. Yeah, I'm gonna do the normal morning stream, and then we'll go live at night. Okay. Yep. We'll do them both. And then when I'm in Florida, I don't know the timing. Like I might be able to do a stream um, in, you know, certain days or whatever. We're just going to have to see how it goes. What What's going on down there? Okay. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Okay. Have a good day, man. See ya. Right. Oh, boy. Pat's always a lightning rod. That's another reason he's my, my right-hand man on here because Pat's controversial too. Pat always stirs people up one way or the other, for him or against him. Oh, man. Pat said that Iowa-Minnesota loses money. They were the 10th highest rated game last year. Seems like it made money. I'm not going to act like I'm some financial whiz over here breaking down all these payout numbers and all that. I don't, I don't, I'm just trying to understand the general operating philosophies with all this. Um, Man, there's just a lot of meat on the bone. Let's keep it moving. 618, what's going on this morning, man? Hello. Hello. What hey, up? How you doing, John? I'm doing very well, man. Hey, what's man. going on? Uh, thanks for giving me a call today. What's on your mind? Man, uh, this college football playoff thing, man. I mean, now I'm looking at it, man. If I'm Notre Dame, why would I join a conference if I can I get twelve million for the college playoff, plus another six million bonus if I make the playoff. Yeah, plus the NBC money and the ACC TV money. That has nothing to do. That's separate than the TV money. And Notre Dame's got an NBC pile and then an ACC pile. I, man, I think Notre Dame ended up in a decent spot here, don't you? Yeah, and then Notre Dame is the only the only college football team. No matter away games or home games, they they're going to be on TV every week. Yeah, it's, dude. I just think, I think Notre Dame made a good deal here, and I'm not that worried about giving up that buy. It's not ideal, but I think it's well worth the cost of being involved in all this and having access and having this money. I'm willing to make that sacrifice. And and people acting like like Notre Dame is. Is like you know about the PC. Notre Dame is only in sport, and the only sport they're not in football. They're, they're independent in football. I'm not worried about the ACC blowing up. Yeah, it's just it's going to be really. And the other thing is, where are Florida State and Clemson going? Are they trying to hop in the SEC? Is that the plan? What are going to even? Let's just say that they get out of it this year. For the, for the 24 25 season, where are they going to go? I mean, where are they going to go? Who, who's going to want them to come? The SEC didn't want Florida State. Maybe the Big Ten might want Florida State to come in in, in 25, but I, Man, I doubt that. But, but if you lose, if you're the ACC and you lose Clemson and you lose Florida State, what is left? You have what? Miami as like a big name historical program? Like what is left? Like I I just don't I, I don't I think they're on shaky ground. I don't and there's internal dissension. <laughs> the money's bad. It's just icky, man. I'm glad we didn't jump in the ACC I always, full time. I never looked at I never looked at the ACC as a football conference anyway. I always said it was a basketball conference. And as long as you don't lose Duke and Carolina. Right. You're okay because you, you still have that basketball tradition. They have no tradition. They have no traditional rivalries except for the, the Florida State-Miami rivalry. They have no other traditional rivalries. Yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's really interesting. And it, it was important to me that Notre Dame had a plan, entered these negotiations with a plan. They knew they were going to have to give some concessions based on independence. They had their priorities in order, and I got to give Notre Dame's leadership credit. I think they did a pretty good job. This is a deal you can live with financially and competitively. I, I think they did good. I, I'm in a good mood about it. I like I like where Notre Dame's positioned. I think the two conferences that's probably mad about the Notre Dame deal is probably the SEC and Big Ten because they like, man, look, deal, we wanted this done to keep them from getting really any, you know, 
they're getting like a whole lot of money. Now, you know what I'm saying? They sitting there, they got the 12 million, which is the same thing. They get, they're basically getting the same thing that all the ACC schools get. And if they, if they make it to the playoffs, they get an extra $6 million just for making it to the playoffs. I yep. mean, that's a good deal. And if you end up in a 14-teamer, wouldn't you hope that a decent Notre Dame team could be in that field almost every year? Like, they should be. You'd be able to lose two games for sure, maybe even three certain years, and be in that field. You got to get in. Man, I think even with a 12-team playoff, the committee is not leaving Notre Dame out with two losses. I've thought that too. I thought with two losses, Notre Dame's in the twelve team or almost every year. You would, I think, you would have to have an, a unique year where a whole bunch of teams end up with like one loss or something to bump you out at that point. Um, because I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think, ten and two Notre Dame should be in more times than they're not in the twelve team. Or I agree, you may not get that home game in South Bend round one, but I think being in it. That should be close to being good enough pretty much every time. And um, I'm I'm gonna agree with the last caller about the about the um about Rutgers and and I forgot the other other uh, Maryland man. It's gonna be almost to a point where like it's probably gonna get to a point where they. It's, it's almost going to get to a point where the Big Ten is going to be like, man, we can't afford you to be around. You know, they almost going to possibly have to force Rutgers and, and Maryland out of the Big Ten. You know, yeah. I don't think them. It's a money pit. Yeah, it's just, I, I just, I agree. It, it's, but, but they must do the math. They're smarter than me. They must have crunched the numbers and knew they were going to end up ahead, up buoyed by the top part of the conference. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like we're giving, we're issuing you ninety million dollars, and you're bringing nothing to the table. Maryland, you know, they used to be real good in basketball, but it's almost to the point like, man, uh, they okay in the Big Ten, but they was great in the ACC. Right. <laughs> the Rutgers bring nothing to the table, basketball or football or any other sport. Yeah. For that matter. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you know the other thing that's funny is. They're not usually any good. And anytime I see one of their games on when they're playing like a decent team, it's always just cold and miserable and crappy in New York. Like there's just nothing I like about Rutgers. Even just saying the name annoys me. Like there's just nothing out there. I, it just doesn't excite me. The only reason I can see the Big Ten like try to do them because of like they surrounded Penn State with Maryland and, and New Jersey. It surrounded Penn State. And they were like, okay, now, you know, maybe one of them will catch fire and be good. And since they got a, they got their own little rivalry going, except for Ohio State and Michigan. Right. Yeah. It, it Man, this is going to be really, really interesting. I think Notre Dame's in a position now where they could kick back, mind their own business, keep getting better as a program, watch some of this burn down, watch court cases, learn all you can about all this. I think Notre Dame's in a pretty good spot and I feel better about it than I did a few months ago. Um, and I, I just think Notre Dame is in a position to be able to thread the needle for now, be independent, have reasonable access to the playoff with flexibility moving forward. Should the circumstances change, that's about all you could ask for. And I believe they have those things. I'm, I'm pretty content, and man. I'm, pretty if, happy with it. Not going to lie. State, if I'm Florida state or Clemson, I'm looking at like what Notre Dame doing, man. Maybe we could go independent. Maybe we can go independent as long as my Florida State, well, not Clemson, but Florida State, as long as I can keep the Miami rivalry and the and the Florida rivalry. Hey, you know what, you man? Know, I don't have to. You bring up a good point. I wonder if any, you know what, man? I wonder if anybody over there even thought of calling Notre Dame and learning more about independence and how the TV deal work and how you do this. I think I, I think that's interesting. I wonder if they even consider that as an option. I don't know. Because I look at it like this. I mean, if I'm Florida State, if I could keep Florida on the schedule, keep Miami on the schedule, and then schedule and schedule any way I want to schedule, you know what I'm saying? Schedule the best teams. 
I don't have to schedule no SEC team besides Florida. I could go outside the box and I could schedule, you know, with, with the Big Ten going to have like a nine-game schedule. I could schedule a USC. I could schedule a Oregon. I could schedule a Ohio State every other year, you know. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, and I, I think a lot of feelings was hurt during that college football playoff and I, and I, last year, and I think that the ACC didn't take up for Florida State. And Florida State gets their bump, and we won't out. Yeah, Ugh, man, I don't know. There's a lot of meat on this bone. I, I don't know, man. And I still say one of the – I think it's so important that this first year of the expanded playoff, did Notre Dame be in it? I don't know if that makes – practical sense or not but to me it's a big priority that the first time we do this and open it all up that you're in it and you plant the flag and say get used to Notre Dame I don't care whether it's 12 20 whatever we're doing get used to that Notre Dame flag being in this thing this is a big big year man <laughs> everything's changing so much and you got a lot in the line you know all these shifts you you got to have a good year this year it all needs to come together damn it and just look, and if, if let's just say Florida State decides they go on independent, and you get a Florida State and a Notre Dame who's independent and historical powerhouses that's in the playoff every single year, it's going to be more schools that's going to be like, man, they getting they getting such and such X amount of dollars, they get to keep all their TV revenue money. They might not get as much as we get, but hell, they're getting a whole lot. Plus, they're getting eighteen million dollars just if they make the playoffs. I mean, they're getting twelve if they don't, and they're getting six if they do. So, why, why in the world should we should we stay in a conference where we got to share anything? Yeah, it's exactly. I so I don't know, man. Good, good. All I know is Peep of Aqua, man, that dude needs needs a raise because he comes into Notre Dame and all this existential huge change stuff lands on his desk. God bless that guy navigating the TV deals. I mean, he's this is existential changes to college football we've been in the middle of and trying to navigate us through all of it. I don't know, man, but I think Notre Dame's in a pretty comfortable spot for now and we need to make the playoff, have a little run and then move forward. That's where I'm at on all this. Okay, and now to change subjects, I wanted to talk about a little bit about the um, the pot of gold. And I was listening to a couple of shows talk about the quarterbacks and the quarterbacks that they prefer. The one I prefer is that Ryder Lions kid because he fits what what Notre, what what Dan Brock is trying to do and trying to change mm. a fourth quarterback. Mm. Wait, so, now you're hey yeah. now now you're on to something. Goolsby and I did the one of the Patreons yesterday. He brought that up to me too. Exactly what you did. He said with Denbrock here and knowing Denbrock's preference and the type of athlete that he likes to work with at quarterback. Goolsby saying, I think you're going to see a lot of this start to change to where you're lining up not only the starter but the backup in more of that skill set because it's what Denbrock prefers. I think you're right on with that. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I know they, they talk a lot about the kid, um, the kid, but, hey, man, I, I was looking at the rankings. And, um, I was looking at the rankings, and I see Ryder Lyons was, was – um, Ryder Lyons was, was – um, he was ranked, like, number six, and he's a five-star in the 26th class. Also, man, you know, it's a kid that's in Arkansas, man, that, that I, I actually get to see personally when he was young, man. And that kid is like what they what they trying to fit. And that's is I mean, he's a four star. So, you know, they I would you know, I would preferably if this is what Denmark want, I'm preferably going after the quarterback that he's he prefer to work with. Yeah. Not the not the quarterbacks, not the pocket passes or whatever because of what we see in college football the five the five four and five star quarterback that's like really great athletes them the ones that really they're transitioning better to the game to the college game i'm not saying the nfl game but the college game they train that they, they're 
they're translating better to the college games than what the kids have like pocket passes or yeah you know and that is a dynamic that can open things up for notre dame every play turns into two like there's a lot of advantages to a more mobile guy like that denbrock just came off a great year with the guy fits in that mold uh deuce knight definitely is the poster child for that kind of athlete and uh that's coming down the road um and so I, I don't know I man one dude night get on on campus, man, dude. <laughs> you might see, you might see a mentee or car transfer because that's yeah. what they prefer. You know, I'm not saying that car is not an athlete and mentee ain't either. Right, but, but not that it. kind. Yeah, what that's a different kind of athlete. athlete. That's a different kind of athlete. Yeah, he's an animal, man. And man, that guy and loves Notre Dame man. too. You guys, he lo every time I ask the people I go to, are you hearing anything about Deuce and the SEC and Lane Kiffin trying to get him and all that? Everybody goes, nope, he loves Notre Dame. He loves Marcus Freeman. He's all in. Like the guy loves Notre Dame. He loves Marcus Freeman. His mom loves Notre Dame and Marcus Freeman. I think they're safe on this one. But the only way I can see Deuce transfer, deciding to decommit, if Notre Dame goes for if they fire Freeman, they fire Freeman tomorrow. He might decommit. Oh, and so I'm looking elsewhere. But yeah, I. But even that, I don't think he will just say, "Hey, nah, man, I'm gonna go and decommit because they fired, they fired my guy." Yeah, and I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, and so I think they're looking wow. pretty good there. Uh, hey, man, thanks for giving me a call on a Wednesday. I appreciate you. Cover a lot of ground. There's no problem. All right, man. Beautiful. We'll talk to you, man. Have a good afternoon. Man, this guy never runs out of ideas. Every time he calls, idea, idea, idea. Will he be hard again? Personal problem, can't answer that for you. But, man, this is the realest shit I've ever seen on this show. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This is the realest shit I've ever seen on this show. Ohio State isn't the boogeyman they think they are to ND. ND has been its own boogeyman for my entire life. 100% existentially, philosophically, and practically correct. That is extremely well stated and accurate. And your name's hilarious. But that's not the point of this. That this is, that is spot on. That is spot on. What else do I have here real quick? Jay Lehman, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for checking on me after Monday. Oh, boy. Look at this. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan doesn't even... Ryan Hobbs must be an Ohio State buck nut. Notre Dame will never schedule Ohio State again. Just uh, put... It... Just butt an L in the column. Ryan, you're worse at trolling Notre Dame than Notre Dame fans are are at trolling Notre Dame. <laughs> like, bro, like, dude, that's how you know something's gone horribly wrong. Ryan, you are worse at trolling Notre Dame than we are at trolling ourselves. <laughs> you got to up your troll game. Not your best effort, man. Not your best effort on that one. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. We got a spelling error in there. I just, and the other part is, the other part is, it's like just, they'll never schedule, to just put an automatic loss in the thing. Bro, It that game went to the literal last play and the literal last second is what that game came down to. The way you're stating this is like it was a 68 to nothing beat, beat down or something and don't even bother showing up. It literally went to the last inch and the last play of the game to decide it, which is by definition a pretty competitive good game. But dude, you know you ain't doing this good when you troll us worse than we troll us. <laughs> Bad job, dude. Bad job. It's just a bad job. God, our own people troll us better than this. 
Oh, Kent, you need to get your people, man. You need Kent. I'm holding you responsible. Kent, you're the mayor of Ohio State land over here. You got to you gotta have a, a network. Uh, you need to do a course where you teach these people how to troll. Oh, that's funny to me. That's really funny to me. By the way, John, how is your dog doing? Might want to keep those M&Ms tucked away. You guys, I had a major issue yesterday. I had a major issue yesterday. Check this out. <clears throat> if you're on Twitter, you know about this. The wife works in surgery. She's gone at like 5.30 in the morning. I don't wake up. I don't even know she's getting ready. No, no, I don't need to be up that early. She's gone at like 5.30, going to the hospital. And we got these two dogs, coon, uh, coonound, whatever, these two dogs, and they're getting older. They're in the front of the house. I'm in the back of the house. And then in the morning, I get up and I go get the cure rig to make a coffee while I'm in the shower. And when I get out, it's ready. I go out there to the front part of the house. There is piles of dog barf everywhere with red everywhere. I mean like seven different piles of huge dog barf with the food in there that they ate and it, but it's all red. The liquid, it's all red. It's dark red. I am thinking one of these dogs is bleeding out internally. They ate something, they're dying, you know, they have cancer and it finally broke loose. I don't know. But when I see seven piles of red dog barf, I'm thinking the worst. So I'm thinking there's major internal bleeding. I call uh, talking to the vet, whatever. What do we need to do? Trying to figure it out. I'm kind of panicking, trying to figure out which dog it is that's dying and bleeding out. And then I go by the cabinet, bro. There was a family pack of, of Valentine's Day M&Ms. They ate all of them. Somehow got in the cabinet, whatever, like the family pack, not like an individual package of M&Ms. The one that weighs like five pounds, like the huge bag for parties. And so it was just food coloring, but they were sick for like 24 hours in a row, but it was food coloring, not blood. Anyways, I know that was a bright story you all wanted to hear. But it was a relief when I was like, oh, it's not blood. It's just food coloring dye. I was convinced they were dying. Anyways, <clears throat> I don't know. Let me, what else did I want to hit? I can't answer this, Eric. Eric, you need to be friends with Kent as much as you guys are with Ohio State. And you're both like, my guys. So John looking forward. Is this the last deal ND makes for independence? The next one made will be to a conference or do you think they could continue to make deals like this? Well, it depends on the circumstances. I think this deal is completely livable and manageable. Practically, I just think it's a good deal. Can they get that again? I don't know. What are the dynamics? I don't know. What's the money like? What happens to the ACC? Also, how does Notre Dame perform in the new playoff? That's a part of it. I would kind of like to see. I'd kind of like to see how Notre Dame does. Like, there's a lot of things here that I can't answer. But they reached their two bars here. Enough money to not fall it totally up in reasonable playoff access. They have both. They have both. So I don't know. I, I'm still saying, what does Notre Dame do if for some year at the negotiating table, all these other conferences literally go, we're just not doing this anymore with you. You're the only outlier and it's annoying and, and we're not doing that. We're just voting you that you can't be in the playoff unless you're in a major conference. That's what everybody else wants. 
right? That's what everybody else wants them to do to Notre Dame is go, you know, there's like four or five of us against you and you're outnumbered. And if you're not in a conference, you're not included and you're outvoted. But that doesn't seem to happen. These people seem to respect Notre Dame at the negotiating table because of the brand, because of the money, because everybody's got an opinion on Notre Dame. You either love them or you either hate them. How many people have you met in your life and it's like Notre Dame? Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on them. I barely know anybody that is neutral on Notre Dame. I don't know. Oh, geez. Is this what we've devolved to debating the the debating like Iowa and Indiana? <laughs> you know what, though? Notre Dame, Iowa would be fun. I'm not saying it'd be exciting. I'm saying it'd be fun. <laughs> right? Are you following me? Like, there's some midwesterniness that I wouldn't mind Notre Dame and Iowa. I'm not going to call it exciting, though. <laughs> it's like, especially the way that uh, both of us play offense the last 20 years. Maybe that's about to change. I don't know. We'll see. Literally, I'm not saying it would be exciting. I just think it'd be fun. Adam, you know, if Notre Dame played at Iowa, that'd be kind of a cool setup. I'd be interested in that. <laughs> I, I I said what I said. It wouldn't be exciting, but it'd be fun. <laughs> uh, Iowa or Purdue, which do you hate more? I don't even really, I can't say I hate Iowa because they don't, they just like don't, I mean, I just don't think about Iowa much, right? Like they're not in my purview. And I used to really not have anything against Purdue, but then when they all lost their nerd minds over that drum, then that was it for me. Like it was like Michael Jordan, it was like that, that was, that was all it took for me. And now it's personal. Like I, I used to not really care about Purdue. And even though they were in state, I never really let it bother me. And then once they threw a hissy fit, because their 80 foot drum couldn't be accommodated for everywhere they went then that then that's when I started to get a hard on for them all the engineers in the world and they came up with an 80 foot impractical drum you can't bring anywhere and then they're known for being engineers you got to create a folding drum or a drum where you could suck the air out of the middle of it and it folds I don't know you don't you don't get to roll into town with something that incredibly inconvenient and impractical and then be mad it can't fit anywhere. That's just the way it's going to go. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know that Proctor thing. It's got to be money. It doesn't really make any sense otherwise. It's, so I don't know. And I know I had a thought of like, I remember Notre Dame tried to get into that deal. But if it's all this money stuff, then you don't want to mess with it anyways if you're Notre Dame. So I don't know. It's just kind of wild. All right, folks. That's going to be it for the show. Pretty well-rounded, man. Pretty well-rounded. We jumped all over the place. A uh, little troll action, a little some phone action, a little debate. This was fun. Thank you for all the donations. Thank you for all the chats. Thank you for your calls. I will have a video tomorrow highlighting some other specific details on this uh, CFP negotiation and where Notre Dame, uh, how Notre Dame did in that. And then we'll go live Friday morning. And then I'm planning on me and Pat being here Friday night. Then I go to Florida Saturday and then that'll be a different schedule. Obviously I'm going to pre-record content to have ready to post. I will surely record from the patio in Florida. Like I've done before, whenever I get to a different state, different, mind state. It changes things. There's, my brain thinks different when I'm down in Florida. It's just a different scene and setup and everything. And it makes my, it triggers a different part of my brain. That's when you pull the laptop out and go on the patio and record. We'll do all that. I'm going to try and go live and I'll just have to let you guys know when. Maybe it's the normal morning time. Maybe it's just chat only, no calls because I can't bring my mixer. Um, <clears throat> but I'll keep you guys up to date. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. We had a, a good time this morning, even the trolls. Have a good one, everybody.